Hey folks, time for another episode. Uh, I decided to actually do one of these on the fly instead of just being lame and reading one of my blog articles. Because <laughs> that's really just cheating, isn't it? But in true uh, squirrel fashion, since I can't seem to sit down just to talk to a fucking computer. I, I would do it while I'm out walking around, but the sound quality is such shit when I do that. Anyway, I'm sitting here painting my fingernails black for tomorrow's festivities. It is Halloween. And since I'm American, I felt obligated to throw a party. So that's what I'm doing. Really excited. I had my mom ship over some candy from the States. And then I bought some kiwi candy. And uh, hopefully we'll get some little ones and it'll be a blast. But anyway, I digress. Today's topic... Today's uh, topic I actually came up with a long time ago, and I'm going to call it Cultural Dating Conundrums. <laughs> the funny thing is, is I, I came up with this idea, and then um, my partner and I broke up. <laughs> N not, com well, not unrelated, but not completely related to the things I'll talk about. Um... But that's, you know, that's our journey, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk about that. Um, so I kind of just lost all, all interest in the art, in the idea. Um, but we've been back together now for a while, and, and everything's completely different. So it's all good, but, um, I find it really interesting, you know, as, gosh, how long have I been here? I got here in February, so what's that? I, I don't know. I'm not going to do the math. I've been here for at least eight months, I reckon. Eight going on nine months, perhaps. And I still notice continually differences, just cultural differences, both in my personal life and my work life, that I, I realize I'm, I'm basically... Uh, I'm deep brainwashing myself in ways. Um, you know, I read a book about coming to New Zealand before I moved here, and one of the things that the guy said was, as an American, you are going to get frustrated. <laughs> and I just wrote that off, and I was like, yeah, it's just because you're some American asshole that expects, you know, instant gratification, and, and you know, you can't, you just can't relax, and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'm nothing like that. Oh, f yeah, I am exactly like that. In fact, I'm probably worse. And I never realized it until I got here. Um, you know, I spoke about in Star Spangled Kiwi, uh, one of the things, that, you know, at work, a lot of people, and people in general, they tend to excuse my behavior because I'm American. They'll just be like, oh, yep, that's, that's Summer. She's, she's American. And at first I thought it was funny. You know, I, I kept going back and forth. It's like, should I be offended? Should I think it's funny? I'm inclined to think it's funny. But then I'm like, do I really want to act like that? Do I really want people to make excuses? And what's even tougher is the second someone hears me talk, they know I'm American and they pigeonhole me. But shit, we, we do that everywhere, right? Americans probably do it worst of all to everybody. So do I really have a right to do that? Or to get offended? No, I don't. Not until I can, you know, hear someone speak with an accent and not immediately pigeonhole them into some god-awful stereotype just because I grew up believing bullshit like everybody else. But anyway, one of the first things that struck me when I got here is uh, the way that Kiwis use the word partner. In the States, and, and feel free, Americans, to correct me if I'm, if I'm on the wrong track here, I reckon it'll, it'll matter if you live in, like, a liberal versus a, a conservative state. But I was always, I grew up thinking, when you use the term partner, it means that you're in a same-sex relationship. So imagine my shock when I got here, and everybody would say, oh, my partner. Oh, yeah, me and my partner are doing this this weekend, or... Oh, my partner and I have lived together for some, you know, like, as you get to build relationships, as you get to know people, they, they start to, to talk about their relationships. 
And it seemed everybody used the word partner. And at first I thought, well, there can't be that many gay people here. I mean, I I've, I've, I've figured New Zealand was a progressive place. I know that they don't tend to f- get hung up on social bullshit the way that Americans do. But I was shocked. But then, in, in continuing these conversations, they will eventually say their partner's name. And nine times out of ten, it was someone of the opposite sex. And I got thinking, well, wait, wait a minute. We're talking about their partner, but it's, it's their boyfriend. And it just seemed really weird to me. They, they don't, they, they use partner here a lot. And they, they so they do, they do say boyfriend, girlfriend. Um, like when you're dating, and you're, you're dating someone, you're kind of in the infancy of the relationship. But it seems like if you've been with someone for a while, you're cohabitating, um, they start using the word partner. It's, it's kind of a deep, I, I, and please, someone tell me if I'm wrong here. But what it seems to me is that it's a deeper, uh, it's a deeper meaning to the word boyfriend girlfriend. It's a it's a more meaningful title than boyfriend girlfriend. It's partner, and I really really like that. Um, you know, it's quite common here for people not to get married because they don't have the, again the same crap that that Americans have with um, you know rights and and having medical and and financial rights to the person that you're. With, uh, you know, in America, there's a lot of, mostly the reason to get married is, uh, you know, if, you know, you're with someone for 10 years or something, and then all of a sudden they're in a devastating car wreck and they're in the intensive care unit, the ICU in the hospital, you have no right to go and see them because you're not family, yet you've been with them for 10 years. So you see, you know, usually it's just paperwork reasons to get married. Here they... They allow, they actually allow common sense to dictate social norms, which is refreshing change from a land of bureaucracy. And I'm not saying there's not bureaucracy here. I'm, you know, bear with me here. I'm making generalizations. They do tend to use their common sense more. Like even the road signs here, it's like, hey, slow the fuck down. You're not stupid. Make wise decisions, you know? So with that kind of focus, they're like, well, why, why wouldn't you let someone see someone else in the hospital? They've been together for 10 years. It doesn't matter if there's pay, paperwork involved. And I'm like, yeah, exactly, right? That's what I'm saying. So anyway, but in, in, you know, in thinking about that, I just want to talk about the word partner here for a second because I find it quite significant. You know, in my own relationship, I think about the word partner, and I think, you know, that just makes more sense to me. As someone who has an extensive circle of friends, I am fortunate enough to say, and in growing up my entire life, my, my best friend has always been male. I've always liked males more than females, and I do have plenty of magnificent female friends. You've heard me talk about them. They're wonderful, wonderful, lovely girls that I love very much. Um, but my best friends do tend to be guys. Um, so I've always had a boyfriend, right? <laughs> you know, you talk about titles. So I, can't, I could fucking talk forever about titles, this infatuation with titles. Someone is sleeping with someone else. What do you call them? I call them by their fucking name. That's their, you know? I have a friend who's sleeping with some other friend, and what do I call them? Are they your special friend? They're not your boyfriend, you know? When do you decide to add those titles? It's, it's up to those other people. You know, it's up, it's up to the individual when to add those titles. But until they do, everybody around them is going to be uncomfortable. What, you mean, that's your boyfriend, right? No, not, not really. But you're together all the time. But you're sleeping with him. Yeah, but, you know, I don't want to call him my boyfriend. That's fair, right? They get that choice. But we're super... Society is... I don't care if you're from America or if you're a Kiwi or whatever... Everybody is more comfortable when you put a title to something. So, I think, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm not sitting here asking the guy I'm, I'm seeing, you know, how he feels. I don't really give a shit. I only care about how I feel. I mean, I care about how he feels as far as, like, your needs of me being met, you're happy in the relationship, good, golden. Other than that, I don't care what he calls me. He calls me a lot of things. <laughs> 
Some of them good, probably some of them not so good sometimes. But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I like the term partner. What it means to me is that you are sharing. You are sharing everything. You are sharing every aspect of that relationship. You know, as, as I've, I said in um, my, my one about, you know, relationship identities, breaks up, breakups and identities, you know, part of creating a relationship is creating a new identity wherein you are now sharing an aspect of yourself with that other person. Now, it's important to both protect your independence, but also to give yourself uh, over to that relationship a little. And put in some work. But, but everything should be reciprocated. And, and how do you do that? Well, you communicate. You say, hey, this is how I feel. Is this how you feel? If it's not, you, know, you just make sure you're on the page, same page. And that takes constant communication. Some people aren't willing to put in that work. That's fine. You have to realize that the relationship... May, and listen, for the love of Pete, people, you know I don't, have the, I don't have the answers. I'm just throwing this out there. I'm saying what works. What, what, I have experienced good and bad relationships. Lord knows. I'm saying what works is, you know, you can, basically, with my first relationship, people, I'm here to tell you, three years, three years I was with that person, and you know what I found out on the day we broke up? He had no idea who I was. It was the saddest fucking realization I've ever had in my life. He said something to me, and I just looked at him, and I was like, you don't even know me, do you? I mean, it was just, because you can talk to somebody. But just because you're talking to someone does not mean you're communicating with them. Wrap your head around that. Communication is sharing. It's not a fucking lecture. No, I t as you can imagine, I'm sure everybody out there is thinking, oh, that poor son of a bitch you're with must hear a lecture every now and again. Oh, yeah. I get up on my soapbox pretty hard sometimes. But he does it to me, too. And for the most part... Everything in our communication is reciprocated. I ask a question, he answers. He asks a question, I, you know, we play, it's constant back and forth. And it's important to us that we understand what the other one is thinking. That's how I feel a partnership should be as far as communication is concerned. Now, to take it one step further, once you start sharing, you know, more, more deeper aspects of life, um, again, you know, you, it's a partnership, you know, and, and how do you, how would you honor that partnership, you know, and that, that means something different to everybody, um, you know, some, some things, some things that I have written down here. <laughs> oh, one of the, one of the first things that came up. Well, it was one of the first to be the last things that came up um, was, you know, and this is a big thing to people. How do you recognize the gifts? How do you recognize the gifts and the love that you give one another, right? Because I'm willing to bet if you're in a relationship with someone of the opposite sex, there's a whole lot of women out there that think that they go underappreciated and don't get gifts. And there's a whole lot of men out there that are thinking, boy, this... This is great. She's giving me all this stuff, but I don't know what she wants me to do with it. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm talking about with communication. Are you giving the gifts that the other person can recognize? And are they giving you the gifts that you appreciate? Or you can learn to appreciate? You know, what, what's your idea of a gift? To some people, it's downright material. It's get me flowers, get me chocolates, get me all that bullshit. Spend money on me. I'm not into that personally. But that does not mean that I am not a needy person. I am a very needy person. Lord knows. Anybody will tell you. Uh, I need constant communication. You know, that's probably the most needy thing that I have. And, you know, I, uh, I do a lot of things in a relationship. I write little notes. I, I hide shit. I like to surprise people. You know, I, I put a lot of work into my relationships, and that's just, that's not just for my boyfriend. That's, that's, that's for all my relationships. And, and at first, 
I was having this thing, this problem, this typical female bullshit where I'm like, oh, oh, I don't get anything. What does he give me? Well, I guess I started thinking about it. I knew the kinds of things weren't important to the person I was seeing. And no, the number one thing was time. And, and I realized that just him stopping to text me or to notice small things that I do and picks, you know, pick up on them and, and kind of alter their behavior based on my behavior. These are gifts that people give you. Now, unless you're paying attention, you're probably going to miss it because it's the little things that add up. And, you know, I stopped and I thought, and I was like, well, he's never, he's, he's never going to do anything big for me, right? He's not going to be this big romantic gesture guy. I'm either going to accept that and move forward in this relationship or I'm going to say I'm not, that, that, you know, hey, we're just not, we're not speaking the same language and move on, you know? And, and I'm not saying there's a right and a wrong. If you're not having your needs met in a relationship, there's two things you can do. One, evaluate your needs and make sure that they're not, you're not asking too much because you might be. And I'll get into that in a second because as an American, that's pretty much what we all do. Um... Or two, accept your needs for what they are, even if they're too much. Say, I'm going to find someone who, who isn't going to make me feel like I need too much. Anyway, I'll, I'll get off of that. But, you know, just take some awareness and think, and think about those things. And it's the same with friendships. You know, I'm, I'm going to publish an article, God help me soon, about... Um, my life principles and, and, and expectations. And th that will kind of delineate what I'm talking about here a little bit better. But for right now, let's get back to cultural dating conundrums. Um, and, and I'm just going to talk about what I've, again, what, what I've seen and things that I thought was funny. Um, you know you're talking to a Kiwi when uh, it takes them two syllables to say no. <laughs> I, I don't really, I'm laughing, you probably have no idea why, but you would if you heard a Kiwi say no. It's like, no, they like drag it out. <laughs> I can't, I'm sorry, Kiwis, that was horrible. I, I really can't speak in a Kiwi accent. Um, but last night I also realized it doesn't just take them two syllables to say no. It usually takes them two words to say yes or no, because a typical Kiwi way to say yes is, ah, uh, yep. Like, they're thinking about it, you know, like, aw, yep. And then they decide yes. And they do almost the same exact thing when they say no. They say, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Again, like, they're thinking about it. they got to come back to it. I love kiwis. One of the, you know, and I talked about this, one of the main reasons I love, I love New Zealand and kiwis is because they're relaxed and obliging people. They are just the most relaxed Easygoing people in the world, bureaucracy, a lot of things just don't make sense to them. They are a patient people. So relaxed that someone like me finds it really fucking frustrating sometimes. <laughs> because they're so relaxed, it almost seems like they just don't give a shit. <laughs> and that can be frustrating. So, cultural dating conundrum number one. Relaxed and obliging versus I want what I want and I want it now. <laughs> what is the quintessential idea that you get in your head when you think of an American? I mean, we are instant gratification. You want food, you hit a drive through <laughs> You know, we hate standing in lines. I told my partner the first thing I do if, uh, if and when we go back to the States. We, we will, but it won't be for a long time. But because I love to set up social situations that I think will be funny and just sit back and watch them unfold, I told him the first thing I was going to do was I was going to take him to downtown Manhattan at like 8 a.m. in the morning when all the crazies are out, all the people are hustling, bustling, going to work. I'm going to take him to one of the most popular Starbucks, like on Times Square, I'm not going to let him look at the menu at all. <laughs> and then I'm just going to let him order our drinks. <laughs> P 
pick drinks and order them and sit back and watch as every impatient cunt behind them behind him just starts losing their shit as it takes him five minutes to one read the menu and then three minutes to figure out why he can't get a flat white because they don't exist in the United States. (laughs) And then watch as the chick gets super frustrated why he's not specifying if he wants a wet cappuccino or a dry cappuccino or extra hot foam or soy milk or whatever, a grande or a tall... (laughs) And then every other person behind him is just going to get more and more pissed as it takes him a long time. (laughs) And then he tries to figure out the money bullshit. Oh, it's going to be hilarious. But anyway, this is a consistent problem that comes up with us. Because the second he doesn't give me what I want when I ask for it, (laughs) I'll admit, I'm a big enough person to admit, that I slip the rails a little bit. (laughs) Because I'm so used to getting what I want when I want it. I have, I've been like that my whole life. Uh, it's probably made even worse given the fact that I'm the youngest of three girls. And I have always gotten what I wanted immediately because someone was going to give it to me. Yeah. And I just kind of have that personality. So, yeah. That's definitely a cultural dating conundrum. Um... Other things to consider. Extroverts and introverts. (laughs) I am so introverted it hurts. Or extroverted. God, what a slip up. Um, My partner is introverted. And sometimes I forget that he... Because when he talks to me, he's so lively and funny and amazing. And we spend a lot of time together... And so I forget, I I always seem to forget this when we get into social situations, he acts very differently because he's introverted and it confuses the shit out of me. When I'm around people, I come alive, baby. I just, oh my God, give me any audience. And I just, I feed off of people's energy. It ramps me up. I totally love it. Introverts is the opposite. It takes them significant amounts of energy to just be around people, let alone talk. Introverts are losing their energy to the extroverts who are sucking it out of them. <laughs> so, yeah, that's something you have to consider. You know, these are, these are things that you come to know and respect about your partner. And, you know, you don't make excuses for them. I'm not, I'm not going to be like, oh, Gavin doesn't talk. Oh, shit, I said his name. I'll have to forget, forget I said his name. He doesn't talk to you. You know, he's not talking because, uh, you know, he's introverted. I don't say anything. It's up to him. If he, do, if he wants to talk to people, he can talk to people. If he doesn't, he doesn't. I'm not going to make excuses for him. He knows that I'm going to be bebopping around talking to every single person. I'll wave to him every now and again. But, he, you know, he likes that I do that, and I like that I do that. I'm not going to be stuck up his ass all night, you know. If he wants to talk to people, he can do that. If he doesn't want to go, he doesn't have, you know. He makes his own choices, I make mine. Oh, shit. I'm good at that I said his name. I slipped. Oh, well. Right, I'm not going to get too hung up on it. Anyway, next one. Scientist versus artist. <laughs> Yet another very fun way that, that uh, my partner and I are polar opposites. Um, I am a scientist, a very logical thinker, and he is an artist. He is a very broad, uh, abstract thinker. And sometimes the, sometimes the ideas he comes up with, I'm just like, why would you do it that way? That's not, that's not how I would do it. And again, you can either let the create space in your relationship, or you can just come to respect and and appreciate it. I really appreciate it because I, we see things so differently. He, he always tells me things and I'm like, wow, that is a completely different way to look at that. And I can use that information. I can analyze it and use it to my benefit. So I'm really appreciative of that. But again, it's just because the, I love the person that I'm with. You know? 
I mean, in, in a relationship, if shit's not going to work, shit's not going to work. It doesn't matter if you're exactly the same or polar opposites. You know, so don't don't read into shit too much. I just completely contradicted myself there. But I hope you get what I'm saying. Like, I'm saying we're quite different, my partner and I, and it works because we accept each other for who we are and we do not expect either one of us to change. I don't expect him to be a scientist or an extrovert and he doesn't expect me to become introverted or an artist. Those aren't the people we fell in love with. You know, you cannot... Please, for the love of God, don't go into a relationship thinking you're either going to change them or that there are going to be significant changes in you because of them. People only change because they want to change. I've already harped on this, but for the love of God, you're setting yourselves up for failure. If you go into a relationship thinking, oh, yep, he's going to change. He'll change that. He'll be more romantic. He'll buy me things. No, he's not. He ain't. And even if he does, he's going to start resenting you for making him do things that are against his nature. You get into a relationship, do it for unconditional love, man. Unconditional reasons. I, I accept my partner for who he is. I have no expectations of him outside of what he promises me. And even that was something we had to communicate to one another. If you promise me something, you better come through on it. It's, you know what? It's as easy as not promising me anything, and I won't expect anything. <laughs> The solution is simple. But these are the kinds of things that you communicate about. Have I, have I made any sense? I hope I have. Anyway, the, this whole thing... <laughs> these are conundrums that come up in all relationships, people. But they're probably just more prominent in, in mine because I'm so American. And the whole reason I got the idea for this article or for this little chat we had was because um, more than once uh, my partner has turned and looked at me and said, you are so American. And I'm here to tell you, he didn't really mean it as a compliment. <laughs> because the worst aspect of my personality is that I'm an extremist who wants instant gratification. And I live, literally live on an island where that is just not possible. <laughs> Nothing is happening instantly here. <laughs> Ever. It doesn't matter if you buy something off the internet. It doesn't matter if it's your internet. It doesn't matter if you go to the doctor's office. If you want something to eat, nothing happens instantly here. You have to wait. You have to be patient and realize that you don't have any control. <laughs> You're operating on island time in New Zealand. And he was born and raised that way, so it's just something he accepts. Whereas I was born and raised somewhere where that expectation is not just mine, it's everybody's. This stuff keeps coming up, and it just blows my mind because it's stuff that I never realized was so deeply ingrained in my brain. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. I know I, t I talk a lot about um, dating and relationships on these podcasts. Uh, so the next one will be um, The Fat Chronicles Part 2. I promise you that. Fat Chronicles Part 2, I think I erased my notes. Part 2 was the process, yes. Okay, so next time, promise, we'll talk about some weight loss. We'll get off this relationship shit. But, you know, whether you're in relationships or not, I think this is beneficial. Like, this whole, you know, the whole concept, if you get in a relationship, understand that you're creating a new identity. Give yourself time to change, to adjust, to be comfortable. Communicate if you are uncomfortable. Anybody who's worth keeping is going to communicate with you. And just know, sometimes it's better being alone. Because if you're with someone who's not willing to put in that work, you're not going to have a beneficial relationship. And again, I'm not saying this because I've got it all figured out, people. I have cocked up relationships time and time again. I have had shitty relationships with 
friends, family, lovers, all that shit. And I have had no relationships. <laughs> that has been my predominant. I, I am in my second only relationship here, people. So don't, don't think I'm trying to give you the best relationship advice ever. I just, I see what's working and I, and I want to help anybody else. And maybe just reiterate the things that I know to myself. You can't change people. Accept them for who they are. That's everyone. That's everyone, folks. It's not just the person you're fucking. I hate to sound crass, but it's true. Accept people for who they are. Your friends, your family, your coworkers, the people checking you out at the grocery store or the pharmacy. They're doing what they feel they need to do. If they're acting a bit cunty, they're probably going through something. Give them some slack. You don't know what it's like to live in their shoes, all right? Let's be kind to each other, people. All right, I'm done. I'm off my soapbox. Happy Halloween tomorrow!